In this session, we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of working with Simple Steps Raster so that you know how to operate the plugin and then how to go through your steps of HSB extraction and then your final separation. We are totally pushing the envelope with Corel here, so one of the things I will recommend is as soon as you get to separations, get out of the document that you separated in and into another document because the object manager in Corel Draw is a little bit buggy and with this many layers and all this information it will tend to lock up or have issues. First thing I want to do is take a look at what we've got at the screen here. We've got a color wheel comprised of the colors red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. From those colors working with Simple Steps Raster we pull all of the colors in the design. Now sometimes if there's a color between the two it'll be a blend. You'll be mixing red with yellow to make say an orange or you'll be mixing a blue with a yellow to make say some shades of green here we have some of the cyan here you might have that mixing with some of the green to make an aqua marine green etc you can see you've got a color gamut here in the center of this now what I want to do is just run this through simple seps raster so we can see how to use the system advanced tools I'll go to simple seps raster We'll let that load, click on Generate Separations, and I'm just going to do an HSB extra Extract. That's the first phase, and what we do here is we take this image apart. We separate it to its HSB channels before we go into the final phase of our separations. I'll go ahead and click on that, and we'll let that process. Once that's finished processing, let's take a look at what's occurred. We now have a color gamut boundary around the entire object. That's to help us identify the colors that we have visually in CorelDRAW as opposed to only being able to see what colors we're using based on which colors we have enabled or disabled. Now at this phase we've pulled out the HSB, the hue, saturation, and brightness. This is not our final color separation, but here you'll see what we've literally done is we've peeled back the black or the darkness and the lightness and here we can see our hues or our colors which consist of as you can see, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And these are the colors that will be pulled and how they will be pulled in the separation. And we can see that we've got blending in here. And Simple Steps Raster will blend these colors together to create the colors that you don't really see as solid colors here. And these are all solid colors. You've got solid red, solid yellow, but in the middle you've got orange. Here you've got yellow and green but in the middle you've got a yellow green here you've got green and cyan but here you've got what it would be like an aqua blue and here you can see you've got a purple coming from the magenta and the blue the science behind this is really strategic for us in that what we want to be able to do as screen printers is pull the object apart before we separate it so we can see what we're going to be dealing with as far as color is concerned and the simple steps raster gives us the ability to do that we know we're going to be printing a black typically when we're working with this unless we're separating this the way it is. But now we can look at this and say well this is how many colors it's going to be and we can also kind of trick our separations or we can make adjustments here. If I wanted to make these colors more vibrant at this phase I could do something like effects, adjust, and tone curve. I'd have to have this selected. Go ahead and take a look at that. I'll go here and click on the hue layer. You need to have the layer selected that you're working on. It's kind of like pages but they're set up on top of each other as layers. I'll select this and I'll go to effects and I'll go to adjust and I'll select tone curve. Let's say I wanted to make my colors a little bit darker or more vibrant. I could left click here and we'll click on preview and we'll see what happens. So here I can make some adjustments before I go to the separation process on what I'm dealing with. And you can see as I bring that down we're losing the blending and our colors are getting harder as they go up. We'll click on preview again. So here I start managing the color that's in the pixels of the bitmap working with the tools that are in Corel Draw. Now I wouldn't want to do that. I think what we got was just fine. I'll select cancel here. So you can see that what we're doing is we're strategically going to a preview of what we're going to be dealing with. Now this is a very good quality image. If this was a very low quality JPEG I'd see all kinds of different colors and a lot of things having problems and issues that I'd have to deal with but as long as you've got good art you'll be able to separate almost 100% of the time directly to a final separation. It's really going to come down to the quality of the images that you're working with. JPEG compression destroys bitmaps and puts all kinds of colors in them 
and can be very difficult to work with, especially if it's very compressed or a poor quality JPEG. Now once we've gone through this phase, we can go ahead and do our separation. But one thing we have to be aware of, we can't have anything down here enabled and we have to have all three of these enabled. You have to have your B, S, and H layers enabled and then the rest of this, none of this is enabled. Go ahead and go back to my simple steps raster and then I'll click on generate separations. And we'll let that process. Now when you're generating your separations, the best thing to do is don't touch anything on your computer and just let it process because we're going to be doing some pretty complex operations. So we're going to be going out of draw into photo paint with each color, converting that to a perfect monochrome bitmap that holds exactly the grayscale values that it needs to hold, then comes back in as your color in draw as a monochrome, which is a transparent bitmap that has the ability to have spot colors. In other words, it has spot color properties with it so we can manage it like vector, although it's reversed. The foreground is a right click, the background is a left click but we can still apply spot colors to it or RGB colors to it or any colors that we want to which makes that a graphic or object in draw that we can actually color separate with or color manage with as opposed to working with grayscales and RGBs and all these other types of bitmaps with the exception of duotone that don't let you apply spot colors to them. Also when you are processing your separations you will see photo paint open up and close on your system and that's when we're processing the monochrome bitmaps and you can see that that might actually happen here. It depends if photo paint is going to run in front or behind Corel Draw, but you will see on your taskbar the little photo paint icon coming up and closing as Simple Steps Raster is sending those grayscale separations out to photo paint and then bringing them back in as perfect monochrome bitmaps. This will take probably somewhere between a minute and two minutes depending on what you're processing. Also the size of the graphic. If it's a 30 inch by 30 inch print that you're processing. Obviously because we're doing raster processing it might take 5 or 10 minutes. Typically for a full front size design it's going to take anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half to finish the, set the separation process and then have everything set up in Corel Draw. And you can see when the wheel starts spinning that's actually when the system is sending the graphics out to photo paint to bring back your perfect monochromes. And as I said, here you can see PhotoPaint actually popping up on the screen as it's processing separations. There it is right there. That's PhotoPaint. And I think we're getting close to the end of this one. Maybe another 15 or 20 seconds and it should be processed. And there's the third one. Going through all of the different separations and processing them in PhotoPaint and bringing them back into Draw. And this is actually the final phase. The separations are done and everything's been processed. Okay, I'll go ahead and close this. I'm going to turn off the background color which would represent our t-shirt color and take a look at what we have here. We're going to get back a black which is the black plate. We're going to get back a white highlight which is our white highlight and you can see that right there. And that's turned off. We're going to get back a magenta. Actually I'll zoom out here so we can see what's going on. And we'll zoom right in. Now the boundary box is a visual representation of the colors because we don't want to be looking at what eyes are on. We can tell what colors are on or off looking at this and it helps us to understand what's going on with our separations when we're working at this phase. We have magenta and you can see how that's blended in and recreated. We have blue. We have cyan. We have green. We have yellow. And we have red right there. Now these are all blended together. If we turn our black off we can see the blending of the colors going from the cyan to the green. Now this is a very powerful form of color separation and it's not simulated process. It's very different. It's not index either. What we do is that we start to work with these different colors based on these layers we've set up. Let's take a look at one of our layers. If you want to work on a layer, you have to first select it, then click the plus sign, and here's the bitmap for the blue. Now, if I disable that, it'll disappear. You see my blue disappeared. If I enable that, I'll need to select it again. I can mix these together. If I wanted to, say, move the cyan and the blue to one color, I can do that because all I'd have to do is, because this is a monochrome bitmap, right click on cyan 
and now that's mixed in there as you can see right there so we've got color management control over these with a right click not a left you can see down here that the blue is the outline color it's reversed from vector as I said one of the things you want to be aware of is that you want to get out of working in this phase as soon as possible what, what I'm going to do is we'll take all of this and go to another page the way it is here so I'm going to select only the objects that I want I'm going to take my black, I'll turn that on. I'm going to take my white highlight, which I'd only use if I was printing on darks or colored garments, but I'm going to bring that with me and we're going to take all of our different other colors here. These three hues are for creating something like CMYK printing from this process and we'll cover that in another session. I've got all of this set up the way I want it. I'm not going to take my underbase because I'm not going to need that. And I'm just going to take these colors and we're going to take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. I'll hit Control C. And the reason I'm moving out here is because the object manager in Curl Draw is a little buggy. tends to crash when you've got this much activity going on with it. But it works much better if it's just got one layer with all these objects in it. I'm going to create a new document. I'll select OK. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. Next thing I'm going to do is I can leave this bounding box in here for now and I'll do that. Typically I would just crop this out with the crop tool. I want to take a look at some of the things we can do with our colors. Here they are all labeled for us so we know what they are. And let's say that in my design here, which is not the case in this separation, but let's say I wanted to make my cyan a little bit more vibrant or stronger. Then with Simple Steps Raster, that's very easy to do. I would select my cyan monochrome. I would go to the Advanced Tools and Simple Steps Raster. And we give you the ability to go out of the monochrome back to the grayscale where you can do editing and adjustments to that color separation and then go back to the monochrome. Let's take a look at how we do that. First thing we do is we go to monochrome revert. That will change our graphic back to a grayscale. And what did I have selected there? Did I have anything selected? I'm going to hit control Z. I didn't think I had anything selected. Let me hit control Z. Ah, I had the cyan object. Okay, I'll hit control, shift control Z and we'll go back. My cyan is now a grayscale. Now you can see and can see some of the colors because it now does not have a transparent background. It's on a solid white background, so the colors behind it you can't see and the colors in front of it you can. Leaving that in place, let's go take a look at this. Effects, Adjust, and Tone Curve. Now if I want to make an adjustment to the cyan, I can do that here with my Tone Curve. I could make it lighter by pushing up here to the left and we'll click on preview and we'll see how that affects the shading of our cyan. See that change? It got much lighter. I could make it darker by going down here to the right. Click on preview and it gets much darker. That'll make the cyan more vibrant and will affect the colors that it's blended with. One of the things you want to be aware of when you're working with a tone curve is there's an option for straight here. And I'll go ahead and click on reset actually and we'll go to straight. If I come up here and just drop a node here and then say from straight, go start pulling down here, I'm going to make all of the colors in the grayscale will be affected that are in the lighter range. This is the lighter range, this is the darker range down here. If I came down here and I brought this one up this way, I'll make the dark areas lighter and the lighter areas darker. Now the best thing to do is to set up a grayscale or something and just kind of experiment with this so you get a feel for it. Let's click on preview and we'll see what that does. And you can see what we did there. We kind of blended things out and made the light areas a little bit darker and the dark areas a little bit lighter. I want to go ahead and hit cancel. Now once we've made some adjustments to this, and we can use all of these different tools up here under effects adjust, such as sample, target balance, local equalization, all these things. We can apply all of these to this grayscale. When we've finished applying these effects, or we could even take it and open up in photo paint if we wanted to, to make even more significant adjustments to that color separation. But once we've done that, all we need to do is go back to our Simple Steps raster, and then we can go back here and we can click on Monochrome Convert. That'll send the image back out to Photo Paint, convert it to a perfect monochrome, and then bring it back to us in position. It's going to rename it. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this, and now it's, this has been renamed bitmap monochrome but we know that this is our cyan. Now I'm going to click this one time and I'm going to change this to 
cyan, so I know what it is, even though it's a monochrome. And then I'll come up here with this selected through the object manager and then just right click on the cyan, you can see that color has been brought back. Now I might want to bring it back into place, so I can left click, hold down, just drag it right down here to where it's between the green and the blue, and there you have it. So you can see that we can really do some dynamic editing of our color separations, even though they're in a raster form, by taking them through the monochrome revert back to grayscale, and then when we've made our adjustment, bringing them back to a monochrome through the monochrome convert. So with Simple Steps Raster, what we do is we give you the ability to color separate and then edit your separations by bringing them into a grayscale and then going back to a monochrome. So we've really covered all the bases. First we can do our analysis, then we can do our color separations, then we can do our adjusting and be able to stay with our monochromes by going back and forth. So you can see how this all works and how we want to work with Simple Steps Raster. And yes, it's that easy. You'll over time start to get an eye for how to do things when you're working with this because one of the things you'll realize is that really you're creating all the color in this graphic from red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Yes, you've got highlight whites and white bases and you've got your black also. And when you start to learn how to work with and get the feel for working with these colors, there's literally nothing that you can't color separate or set up directly in Corel Draw. So this is how we use the system. Some of the features that you want to be aware of and how to use them. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session.